Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, she was the only one in the building on campus. So why did she see the dark shape of a woman? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, if you've got one, share one. We want to hear your real ghost stories. Call them in at 855-853-4802 or write them in. Go to realghoststoriesonline.com. You can also get commercial-free versions of the show. And with that, you'll also get advanced episodes and access to the archive. You can become a premium subscriber. You can do it through Apple Podcasts. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes, and Kathy Gordon is with me today. Kathy works on a college campus. You've worked on several. And I know that you've had, we've talked about it before, a pretty paranormal incident in your current place. Have mm-hmm. you had any in the other colleges that you worked at? Well, I'm trying to think. I don't really remember any. And I, th- I don't I don't remember having any. You know, the thing about colleges that and it's not to say that they there aren't some haunting things going on, but it seems like there's always so much commotion and so much life and so much action and so many things that I think it would be hard for spirits to be heard. Yeah. And I also Most think, too, so many college campuses are pretty old, and they, mm-hmm. there's a lot of history there, and you know, a lot of those buildings have been around for a while. I don't have a paranormal story from being on campus, but a scary one. I was, we were doing a, I was on a committee where we'd have concerts and events, and I, so we were on campus late one night doing an event. So the event's over, we're cleaning it up. It's a Friday night. There's nobody on campus, like 10 o'clock on a Friday night. Right. Nobody's there. And we're on the third floor of the student activities building, and we were loading some stuff, and we got down to where we should have gotten off at the first floor, and it dropped a little farther. It was this weird drop thing, like the door started to open, and then the elevator just dropped. It was my old roommate, Lori, and I. We were on the elevator together. Yeah. And then nothing. And I'm like, are we stuck on this elevator? <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that, that. Okay, that. I, I think we might be stuck be, on this yeah. elevator. And I knew there were some other people in the building, like a handful. But this is a building that has hundreds of people on a regular day. And yeah. I'm like, shit, what if nobody comes looking for us? And we're able to pry open the, the doors just enough that we could see, like, it was like neck, the floor was about even with my neck. So oh. we weren't all the way down, and so we could kind of see, and so we we're just screaming, <laughs> help, oh. help, help. Because I'm like, I'm already, yeah. I'm like, how are we going to pee in here? Like, what yeah. are we going to do? Because nobody's going to be on campus until Monday morning. You know, we're oh stuck here. And I don't know, it seemed like forever we were in there, but maybe it was 10 minutes or 15. And some people, they did come looking for us and they were able to. Oh, thank goodness. Because then I'm like, what if they can't figure out? How did they get to, what did they do? You know, it seems like they were able to push the button from the outside and get it to move up. And it just reacted. The buttons from the inside. I think we had to go up to the third floor back down. (laughs) It's like, but at least we know there are people willing to help us at that point. Oh, my heavens. God, that's really scary. And I am super claustrophobic. That is my worst nightmare. Like, I really do. I tell my children, I say, when I die, if you put me in a box and bury me, I will come back and haunt you every damn day of your life. I mean it. And if you don't do that, if you do what I wish, I'll just haunt you like once a month. (laughs) Yeah. So every day, I might pop by and say hi in a nice way. But, you know, if you put me in a coffin, I am going to be a very angry Mm -hmm. ghost. And I have no, yeah. I, you know, do whatever you want. I'll be dead. That's how I yeah. kind of feel. I'd rather be cremated. You no, know, because I, I think there's, I think there's several reasons why I'm, I'm claustrophobic. But then on top of it, I heard those stories about how when the people would die, you know, in the 1800s, 1700s, probably way back before that too. And they would, you know, they'd have wakes because they would watch to because it would be hard to tell if somebody was really dead. Yeah. You know? And there's all these stories of, you know, people that weren't dead that they buried. 
you know, because they did, they thought they were dead. And I'm like, that is, I think I heard that as a kid. And then I was just horrified <laughs> ever since after that. It was like, oh my no, God, you will not bury me. Well, this one does take place on a campus and it does seem to be paranormal, not getting stuck in an elevator. So okay. it says, I wanted to write in to you and tell you a story that happened to me while I was in college. At the time, I was studying photography at Arizona State University. The photography building on campus is a repurposed dorm from when the campus was first built, and it was also a library at some point. The building itself was split into two levels, with a large staircase in the middle, which brought you up to the very long hallway of the second floor. This hallway had a number of doors leading off of it, some of them were prof- professors' offices, some were classrooms, and two were dark rooms for printing photographs. Just think of the hallways from the movie The Shining, but with oh, linoleum no. floors and white walls, and that is exactly what it looked like. Oh, my Okay, gosh. creepy. One day, I had been slaving away in the dark room trying to finish up some final touches on photographs as it was finals time, and I had a big critique in the next couple of days. I neglected to notice what time it was until the lab aide came in and told me I needed to leave because it was time for the photo lab to close. I begged her to let me to stay. I, I begged her to let me stay just a little longer as I only had one more exposure to do on a particular photograph and wanted to run it through the chemicals to develop it. She agreed and told me she would lock all the doors to the dark room and workroom and to close them when I was done. She then said that she was going to lock the front doors because she didn't want anyone else coming in trying to work while no one was there, but that I would have to just push on the door and it would unlock. I thanked her and went about finishing up my final print. I'm going to interject right here because that was really nice because we talked about that in some episodes a while ago. You and I both took photography classes way back when. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the middle of that, then you're just screwed. You got to start over. There's no like, okay, this will wait till tomorrow. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the same thing in printmaking if you're doing lithography. Um, We used to start, we'd have to wait until the, the, you know, print shop was available, which was usually late afternoon. And then you had to print until you got all the prints you needed because if the plate dried up, it was gone. And that's so that. somebody had to be keeping it wet the whole time. So it would usually be two, three, four in the morning before we could get done. And you yeah, know. there's no starting over on that. So kind there's of a thing. lot of those kinds of things like in college yeah. like that. So she goes on and says it was about an hour and a half later, of which I had been coming in and out of the dark room, gathering my things from the workroom and storing my photographic equipment in the lockers, which were located about three quarters down the long hallway of the second story. I was supposed to meet a friend outside of the photography building as we were going to go to the library and work on a research paper. (laughs) This makes me so glad I'm no longer in college. (laughs) I decided I'd use the restroom in the photography building before I went downstairs. For reference, the women's restroom in this building is all the way down on the very east end of the hallway, and the dark room was on the opposite west end of the hallway. I made my way down to the restroom Past all of the closed doors, while I was in there, I heard footsteps on the linoleum outside, then heard the door to the restroom open, and I could also see the bottom of the door open under the gap of the bathroom stall. However, no one came in. As I was there after hours, I just figured that the lab aide had come back to make sure I had closed and locked the doors to see if I was still there. That makes some sense. Mm-hmm. I finished up in the restroom and walked out the door to start walking to the central staircase. I looked up toward the opposite end of the hallway, toward the dark room, when I saw a black figure of a woman standing in front of the door to the dark room. It did startle me. However, I just figured it was another photography student that she looked like a shadow because all of the lights were off. I shrugged it off, looked down at my phone, and told my friend to meet me outside. I had made it only a couple of steps when I looked up again, and the woman had somehow moved over 30 feet. So she was now standing just to the west of the central staircase with her hand extended towards me. 
What really got me, however, is that even though there were huge skylights in the stairwell which flood into the central section of the hallway, I still couldn't see any features of her whatsoever. All I could tell was that she was shorter than me, wearing a skirt with her hair down. It was looking it was like looking into a black void in the shape of a woman. When I realized that she had moved at superhuman speed without making a single sound, I decided I decided it was time to leave and I booked it out of there. After telling my friend what had happened, we went to her dorm and looked up the history of that building. Supposedly, when it was a library, there was a fire and a woman died trying to escape down a side staircase. I don't know if this is real or not, but I'm wondering if maybe the figure I saw was that woman trying to make contact with me. All I know is that whenever I had to go back into that building for my classes, I always thought of the shadow woman who scared the crap out of me. Sincerely, Arlen. That would scare the crap out of me. You're the only one in the building. I know. And it always was scary on college campuses being there late at night like that. Anyway, but that woman and then like to move at that super speed. You know, and even seeing a person would scare the crap out of me. I'd be like, oh, my God, you're a person. Ah, yeah, that would scare the crap out of me. But. When you can't even make out her features and she's dark and she suddenly moves closer to you, reaching out a hand to you. Oh. And like what you yeah, had just said reaching out to him. The, at college campuses, because normally those buildings are so active and so busy mm-hmm. that sh- I'm going to guess this shadow person-y ghost is there and can't communicate with anybody because yeah. everybody's so busy that it's only mm-hmm. kind of after hours when someone's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. No, I, I think it was the woman that died in the fire. I do too. Yeah. And I would be kind of scared to be working late at night on photographs again. Yeah. I wonder if other people have seen her too. If you could do a little research and find out, you know, like type in the ghost in whatever the name of the hall is, you know, Johnson Hall or whatever. It, on whatever campus and I'm see if any, there are any other stories at come up. Arizona State University. Let's see if there's any stories. There are tales of a boy with a red balloon who wanders the former barracks of the Polytechnic campus. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, tour ASU's haunted hallways. That's a thing. Oh, they have a whole tour for it. Well, it's like this whole article. There are things that go bump in the night for no apparent reason. Oh, um, no. oh what else see. do you know? Matthew's Center has many stories associated with ghosts, such as a librarian who reportedly died there during a fire <gasps> who still frequents the place, and another oh. woman who lost her life in the building and supposedly stalks workers who toil in the basement of the building late at night. That's okay, that wouldn't be, be our it. ghost. That would not be our ghost. No, but the one. first one, the librarian who reportedly that sounds died very there during familiar. a fire. Burned in a, died in a fire, um, The right? community services building on Curry Road is a former tuberculosis and children's hospital. Oh. There's been things, you know, people have mentioned, oh, like fall, things falling off shelves and doors closing. Mm-hmm. Um, the Polytechnic campus has a ghost. The Virginia C. Piper Writer's House is frequented by the do- ghost of Dixie Gamage. She, her husband had they been even a know her name. The wife of President Grady Gamage. Grady Gamage. Grady and Dixie? Grady and Dixie. And then there are tales of African spirits in the building who are linked to skeletal remains there. And a huh. few people claim to have experienced the ghost of a former professor... Who oh, seem to well, be a friendly yeah, they'll sort. never leave you alone. Professors will never leave you alone. They are going to make your life miserable. Well, that's interesting. One quick Google search showed there was a woman who died in a fire in a building. That's that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go to yeah. our next story. Let me find it because I scrolled down too far. Here it is. Okay. Hey guys, I just recently came across your podcast and searching for something different to listen to during the day at work, and I'm loving it. I always believed in the paranormal, and it's awesome listening to stories of other people that have had paranormal encounters. 
I want to tell you about my first encounter when I was a kid in a Connecticut town named Torrington. We moved to a new house when I was around 10 years old, and it was a three-story older home that had been converted into apartments. We had moved into the first floor apartment, and the family above us lived in the second floor apartment, but the third floor was inhabited, uninhabited the whole time we lived in the house. Behind the house was a small yard and then a long shed-like structure that was used for storage for the owner of the house. My mom was a single mom, so she had to work a lot, and sometimes that required her to be out of the house late, so I was left alone some nights after school. I've always been pretty mature for my age, so I had no problem taking care of myself after school and doing my homework and going to bed, but from the first day I stepped into that house, I felt like I was always being watched. I was never comfortable, and when I was alone, I always had a very uneasy feeling like I was in danger or something. It's very hard to describe, but because of this, I tried to get everything done before the sun went down so I could stay in my room for the rest of the night. That breaks my heart for this little kid. I got to get everything done before the sun goes down, and especially in winter. That would be really hard. Oh, poor thing. Says, so you might think that I was just a kid and probably was freaking myself out, but my uneasiness was validated when I met the girl that lived upstairs. She was around the same age, we'd become quick friends, and would hang out almost every day after school. After a couple of months, she told me the story behind the house, which explained everything that I had experienced thus far. She said that a family used to live in the third floor apartment but the teenager committed suicide one day, and after that, the family moved out. She said that she would hear footsteps walking and running above her all the time, and she also felt like she was being watched. I felt slightly better knowing that I wasn't the only one experiencing this feeling, but knowing the backstory terrified me. I was glad that I didn't live on the second floor because if I had heard noises, I wouldn't have been able to stay there alone at all. A couple weeks after finding out about the apartment, she convinced me to sneak up the side escape ladder to the third floor to see if we could sneak into the apartment to check it out. Looking back now, it was a really dumb decision, but at the time, I wanted to show I wasn't a baby and scared of anything, so I followed her up the ladder to the window off the living room on the third floor. Looking into the apartment, everything seemed so normal. It looked exactly like my apartment but with hardwood floors and it was completely empty. One of the windows was open, so we snuck into the apartment and looked around. smelled musty, but since no one had been there for a while and it was really quiet, I felt like I shouldn't be there. The feeling of being watched was very strong, and I remember feeling goosebumps like I was cold, but it was the middle of summer. As we were finishing looking through the last bedroom, we heard a weird shuffling noise out in the hallway. And when we turned around to see what it was, we saw the door to the room across the hall slam closed. That was enough for me, and we sprinted out of there and completely freaked out. We never went up there again, and other than that, easy, than that uneasy feeling, nothing really happened in my apartment. But I did have one last experience a couple months before we ended up moving out of that house that has stayed with me. As I mentioned earlier, in the backyard, there was this long shed, and I'd been curious and tried to see what was in there, but it was chained closed, so I could only see through a small space between the doors. And it just seemed like a big storage closet with an old, with old dusty junk. But one night, my mom was home, so I, I was allowed to go in the back and play for a bit before dinner, and it was almost completely dark out when I started to feel that familiar uneasy feeling And I remember looking around, thinking maybe I would see someone. When I looked over at the shed, I thought I saw a pair of eyes, like an animal or something, because they were glowing like a cat or dog's eyes at night. I went back to what I was doing, but I couldn't shake the weird feeling, so I looked back at the shed, and those eyes were still there looking at me. I could see the rest of the animal because it was inside the shed, and all that was visible through the space and the darkness was the eyes. The weird part was that you would expect an animal animal to blink or run away after a while, but it never moved, and the eyes always stayed on me. It creeped me out a lot, 
So I ran inside, I looked out the kitchen window, and they were still there, and I was pretty sure they were still staring at me. I was distracted when dinner was ready, but once bedtime came, I was hesitant to go to my room. My room was off the kitchen, and the window faced the backyard, and I was scared to go in and look out the window, but my mom made me go to bed, and when I walked into my room and glanced out my window, I saw those same glowing eyes right outside my window. To this day, I cannot sleep in a room with a window that is uncovered or with a door cracked open. Everything needs to be closed. That is something that has stayed with me, and I'm pretty sure will never leave. I didn't stay in my room that night. I slept with my mom, which had a window facing the side of the house. After that night, I never saw anything like that again, but I was really relieved to move out of that apartment after a year of living there. I didn't realize how creepy that place was until I lived in a normal apartment again. I never asked my mom if she experienced anything, but looking back now, it is kind of weird that we only stayed there for a year, so maybe she had seen something or felt something too. So that's my first experience with the paranormal. I'm not sure what was in that house, but I know it wasn't just a ghost. It felt evil in a way, and after that as an adult... I have always been careful about which apartments I choose to live in. I never want to live in a place like that again. I have experienced a couple of other things in my life that I will probably write about next time, but this was the start of it, so I wanted to send this first. I want to thank you for providing such an amazing podcast and way for people to talk about their experiences. Stephanie. Hmm. You know, I think it's interesting... You know, she doesn't say anything about her mom passing on, so I'm assuming her mom is still alive. It's not too late to ask her about it. I would. If she's I would still totally. alive. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of things can change. Hopefully your mom's still alive. Mm-hmm. But I would ask and say, did anything weird ever happen to you there? Because I always had the weirdest feeling. And, and you and I have both picked up on, like, multiple places around the mm-hmm. world, literally. And when we travel, yeah. it's like... You walk in someplace and you feel it. I don't know how to describe it other than it's kind of, you just feel it. Yeah. It's as real as a person standing next to you. It's just this, there's something here and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Or -hmm. that feeling of being watched. Right. And they're not exactly the same. You can have a feeling where you just feel like something's in there. But then when you have that other feeling that you're being watched, that... I always say that is a really physical one for me because I I can just feel it in my body that it's like the eyes are just penetrating into me. It's weird. I I hate that one so bad. It's it's an awful feeling. And the it really the, is. The shed thing was kind of weird to me because so she couldn't but she looked over at the shed. Okay, so the mm-hmm. eyes weren't inside the shed. The eyes right. were outside of just, the shed. Yeah, when she looked over there, she could see these eyes. You know, one day I went to get my mower out of the shed in my backyard, and I op- it's the middle of the day. I opened the doors. There's a black cat in the shed, and I saw these glowing eyes. Oh. I literally screamed. And the cat comes running out. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, oh cat. But well, I wasn't planning on seeing eyes in there. And so that would freak me out. And especially it would freak since me out. And they don't the fact seem to that, move. And it stayed, too. Like a cat would be there for a minute, but then they would kind of move, you know. Oh, absolutely. Or go off or something. But this thing, thing to, it seemed to stay. Well, and most animals would leave. Mm-hmm. Because you might have startled them or they're fascinated by you. But once you're back in the house, what's there to look at? So yeah, they take it off. Yeah, they wouldn't just keep staying standing there and plus i don't know how high up these eyes were or, mm. you know or how you know it doesn't seem like it's exactly. connected with the creepy house though it seems like two different things because hmm. in the the um it teenager who died in the house maybe that could explain that weird feeling and the footsteps mm-hmm. the girl was hearing but the outside eyes that just seems totally different I don't know. Yeah, I think I, if yeah. I was Stephanie, I would talk to her mother. I would too. Try to see. I always, I always defer to that. You know, see if you can get some validation from someone else who lived it, and don't feed them information. You know, go. Did you ever see creepy eyes outside? You know, let them tell you your stories, and then see how they line up to yours. 
And maybe nothing happened, but I yeah, think maybe it would nothing. be... Maybe her mom will be like, our mom and go, well, I don't know. I don't I know. Mean, but that one time know. the ball came down the staircase around the corner and turned another corner and then went through the dining room. I guess that yeah. was weird when that happened. <laughs> yeah. You think? Balls can't turn corners on their Mom, own. Did you not hear some... those the the <laughs> footsteps coming yeah. up the stairs every They're... single night? How did you miss that? I know. And then here's another thing, because I remember one night, because she hollered at all of us, like to see if we're in bed, right? And yeah. then now she's she doesn't remember that. But she heard something come up the stairs. Maybe it wasn't our mother hollering to see if we were in bed. Yeah, maybe, maybe it, it wasn't, wasn't her. Maybe, maybe she it was not upstairs. A, a ghost mimicking our mother. <gasps> I never thought of that till just now. Oh my, oh my God. Great. I got something else creepy to think about. Well, if you have a real ghost story, we want to hear it. Call in anytime, 855 853 4802. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you'd rather have an ad free version of the show, you can become a premium subscriber because you'll also get advanced episodes and access to the archive. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.